and welcome. Thanks for joining me in this video. Um, I will be painting my dog Molly. My name for anyone who doesn't know me is Meredith and I paint pet portraits at Fuzzy Angel Portraits and that is my home studio. Um, so I'm just jumping on today to do a quick um, video to show you the second stage of my portrait of my dog Molly. A um, couple of small announcements. You can go to my website to see I'm um, going to be live at craft shows um, coming up this spring and summer. Um, my schedule is continuously updated real time, so please check fuzzyangelportraits.com for that information. Um, and I'm booking for Mother's Day. That's the second thing. So pre-booking for Mother's Day. Um, this is a great time to order for Mother's Day because we are probably, it's May 8th, and my portraits take a couple to three weeks to do because they're oil paint. So if you have any questions or comments about that, just contact me directly and we can get your order in the schedule um, so that it's ready to give to your favorite pet mom. Uh, third thing, last but not least, is I am um, monthly doing a fundraiser um, to raise money for local animal rescue groups or shelters. So right now I'm promoting Animal Welfare Society and Kenny Bunk. So check out my Facebook page or my Instagram page or my blog on fuzzyangelportraits.com and I'll put all those links in the comments below. So check that out and let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to book a portrait but um, today i'm just showing you my process on the second stage of a painting um, just adding some more details to molly's portrait so thanks for watching and i hope to hear from you bye okay so here we are with my already started portrait of molly um, she's on a 9 by 12 canvas and we started her portrait with an underpainting. You can see just a rough sketch of some of the areas that I've been developing with the darker tones in her areas here. Um, I'm going to work on her eyes today and adding a few more details to build out her nose area and some of the light highlights that you can see in her photo. Um, as well as some of the abstract areas of the scarf around her neck. Um, but this will just give you a good idea of how the painting sort of develops over time. So this is basically a second stage that I usually um, work on. And there will be a couple more stages, two to three at least, for this size portrait. Um, so here we go. Hopefully you can see everything. It looks like we're in sh good shape. So basically, I want to start with her eyes first. So we're going to go in with some of that eye color. And start developing the shape of the eye a little bit more in detail. And just adding some layers of highlight and low light. So the pupil is dark in the center. There she is. I just kind of feel my way around the canvas and let her come to life on here. And it really helps to actually put that highlight right on the eye to give a um, it helps me anyway, just kind of like give me a better structure of those might change over the course of the painting a little bit, but I like to just add those in because when I'm referencing her photo, it helps me just make sense of everything. Gets me sort of orientated to her shapes. And with oil paint, it does stay wet, so I can work angles in different areas that you'll see 
as the video goes forward. But the eyes are the window to the soul, they say, and they're a very important part of any portraiture. They kind of give life to the portrait. And the photo I'm referencing is really nice. It's nice and clear and crisp. I can see all the details. Those are the types of photos that I ask people to send me if you're interested in commissioning the work that I do and getting a portrait done of your pet or a family pet or a friend's pet. I'm now booking for Mother's Day, so you'll see on my website, fuzzyangelportraits.com, that there are 15 spots available. The cutoff date is April 23rd. That way it'll get done in time. Mother's Day is not until May, but it takes a couple, three weeks to do each portrait. I can do multiple portraits at once. Um, you know, have two or three running in the background and working on simultaneously. Um, because I do work in layers, so it helps me have a um, workflow. It's not all at once happening. All at the same time, they're staggered. But you definitely want to get on my calendar sooner than later if you're thinking about a portrait for May. Um, that way we can have it in production moving into April and have it dry, shipped out, or delivered to you in time to wrap up and present to your person receiving the gift. It's a little different, something different to give. It's custom. The thing I require from you as the gift giver is the photo. So I would be relying on your photos to help me paint an accurate portrait. Because at the end it has to look like the pet. You really want to make sure the photo is a good clear representation of the pet and the personality of the pet comes through. So I can see the fur, I can see the highlights with a darker fur like this. With Molly, I can use the highlights to define little areas around her face so that it's not so much of a silhouette. It shows more of her detail. Okay. Um, the nose area needs some attention because it has some some angles and some highlights that will help give some structure to that area. So she has some pretty strong highlights right on the edge here of her wet nose. So I could just go right in with some paint right there to help me kind of build around the darker areas um, so it looks wet. I don't want it to get too detailed in this stage because um, my portraits aren't photorealistic. I mean when you step back it feels almost like a photo but when you start to look up close you can see all the brush strokes and sort of movement of the paint on the canvas versus a very photorealistic end result. So I prefer to have a little bit of paint brush stroke sort of coming through the portrait. And I like to see little flecks of color developed throughout the piece. So it's just not so 
photo-like. Although photorealism is quite a talent. I, I don't want to come off like I'm knocking it because I'm not. It's just not my style. And if you connect with my style, that's what you'll receive as more of a painted version of a portrait versus like very photorealistic. So... Molly's been with me for 15 years, and she's doing great. Um, she's quite a character. We think she is part Border Collie mixed with a little bit of Chow or Akita. Um, feel free to leave comments or suggestions on her breed, but um, she was rescued in um, with the Satos from Puerto Rico back in 20, uh, 2007, 07, and um, was fostered with cats and dogs. So at the time we had a cat, so we knew we could have her living with our cat. That worked out at the time. So fostering is a really great program. I'm a big proponent of it. And right now I'm running um, a fundraiser. If you go to my website blog page, you can see um, for the month of March, I'm donating back any um, commissions, a $5 amount on each piece that I commissioned for the month back to um, Animal Welfare Society in Kennebunk, Maine. So if you are thinking of booking a pet portrait, you can know that part of your purchase is going to help rescue animals and finding their forever homes because they do some great work. I'm specifically giving back to a program that they offer in the community for veterinary services. Um, they have a fund that helps low-income people um, not get shut out from getting care for their pets because it's too expensive. Um, so that's where those monies will actually land at the end of the month after everything is tallied up from commission sales. So that's a nice way to give back inadvertently and you get a portrait out of it so I like to do those types of programs each month I'm going to be featuring a local shelter or organization and um, if you have one in mind please feel free to reach out and let me know that um, I could consider putting them on my schedule for upcoming fundraising so I just started this one in March so check that out on my blog at fuzzyangelportraits.com but yeah molly was fostered so it really helped us profile her f tendencies for a su more successful uh, long-term forever situation we, we don't like to hear about stories i mean it happens that pets have to go back to the shelter if it's not a good match you don't know until you really get everybody on board and living together and you know things happen so sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't usually it does but I think fostering is a really good way to make sure pets are able to stay with the families that are interested in having them as part of their family and, and giving it time and such. But um, for Molly, it really helped us feel a little more confident. Otherwise, you're kind of going in blind. They, they just are in a shelter, you know, and they have different um, responses to those environments. And then once they're out of them, they 
may act completely different. So, so yeah, hopefully you can see this coming together. It is a little dark on the screen, but you can really start to see more of her mouth as I just add in a little bit of lighter paint over the areas that I did under paintings of. And again, I'll go back in a second, third time just to adjust all those areas. I'm loving all these little wispies on the sides of her fur. So if you have a darker fur pet, just try to take their photo in like daylight or sunlight. It helps kind of see those highlights a little easier and makes sense when you start painting into their fur you can see it kind of coming out a little bit easier than artificial light really distorts the fur and it's hard to decipher like where the structure is of their face So natural light is great, and um, I think I saw a bunch of YouTube videos on how to take your pet's portrait with your cell phone, <laughs> So, because it is not uh, always the easiest thing. Like, I know my do this photo was a fluke. My Molly does definitely, whenever I pull out the cell phone or other cameras or such, she just looks the other way, so it's a little bit frustrating. I'm like, oh, that would make such a beautiful picture, and then, boop, she's off looking at something else. So it's a fleeting moment. But I know there's some tips and tricks online. You can just do a Google or a YouTube search and see some of those if you're on YouTube. And check out my Fuzzy Angel Portrait YouTube page, too. Give a If you're already seeing this video on the YouTube channel for Fuzzy Angel Portraits. Thank you for watching and also take a minute to subscribe and like the page. Um, otherwise you might be watching this through some of my other social media and that's cool. You can always connect with me on all of my platforms. Okay, so that's a good second session with her portrait. Um, and then I can go back in and develop areas around her whole portrait. I'm just going to mix up a background color. I'm liking the lighter color behind her. Um, I often just do a solid color because I don't want to take away from the portrait um, with anything in the background. So. So I'm not crazy about that color. I think I'm going to add a different color to her. One of my favorite colors is teal blue. A lot of times I have her in different clothing. If anybody knows us personally, you will laugh because I'm always getting noticed for how I'm wearing the same color as the dog. <laughs> so that's more in line with her personality. <laughs> I don't deliberately try to match clothes with my dog, it just kind of happens, so <laughs> I don't know if that happens to you guys, but with me and Molly, yeah, 
that this is this is a this is a good color to have on her background so sometimes a solid color can communicate uh something about the personality so it will make me think of her her little blue coat that she wears when i see this the background really helps kind of define some of the fur and areas around her ears and once it dries I can go back in and detail a little bit more on those wispies because those are really important to the portrait they show a lot of characteristic of specifically her So this is a good ending point for this session on her portrait. Um, please feel free to follow up with me if you're interested. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching. And we'll leave it at this stage for now and then I'll do another video of her final details that I'll be adding into her portrait but it's looking good great thanks again for watching So here you can see where we started from the first part of the video with the underpainting and now the second stage with the work in progress of Molly with more detail and you can see the difference between the underpainting and the second stage. There will be a third stage of adding more detail after she dries in a couple of days, so stay tuned for that. Hey, just a quick note to say thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about how to get your own Fuzzy Angel portrait, please visit my website at fuzzyangelportraits.com. Thanks again.